if you're faced with a situation that you want to change, that there's basically two main choices. You can find a solution or you can remove the cause of the problem. And removing the cause of the problem is uh, much more advisable and much more effective because, you know, <laughs> we can run around trying to find solutions when what we need to do is to remove the cause of the problem and then we don't need a solution. And uh, the cause of the problem is that we have been manipulated into um, a five sense um, body computer mind level of perception. Now what this creates is a false identity so that we look in the mirror and we think the reflection is who we are. When that's the reflection is the vehicle that we're experiencing and allowing us to experience this reality is the body computer conduit to this virtual reality universe. And um, if we come from that level that f uh, false self-identity we are going to think in terms of limitation I can't I have no power little me what can I do um, and therefore we're going to look to others um, to protect us to tell us what to think and, and all the rest of it fundamental to everything is moving our point of observation from I am the reflection in the mirror to I am infinite consciousness having an experience. I am not my name. I'm not David Icke. David Icke's the name of my experience. Um, it's not who I am. I am all consciousness. So are you. So is everyone listening to this program. So is everything in all existence. So once you move that point of observation, your life starts to change. You stop thinking in terms of I can't. You stop thinking in terms of limitation and you stop thinking in terms of fear because consciousness and awareness of itself has nothing to fear and one of the things I, I, I say to people is when you're in a situation ask yourself what would consciousness do and would consciousness um, uh, uh, riot because of something it doesn't like no would consciousness fight a war no would consciousness uh, fear authority and therefore keep its head down and its mouth shut no um, and and if once you come from consciousness, you you you, you, you uh, that's your level of self. That fundamentally changes everything. And then we need to look at taking control of the body computer with nothing wrong with it. It's a conduit to allow us to experience this reality. Without it, we would we wouldn't be doing that. What's happened instead of um, the body computer mind serving consciousness, it's become the governor of our perception and for genetically manipulated and, and other manipulative reasons um, that's exactly what it was we, the position we were supposed to be in we are manipulated through overwhelmingly the reptilian brain so another way that we can remove the cause of the problem is to look at the traits that we get from the reptilian brain cold-blooded behavior having no empathy with the consequences of um, our actions for other people. So let's reverse that. Let's remove the cause of the problem. So when we start to uh, uh, observe our behavior, when we start to fall into this um, lack of empathy, um, well, and, and instead of saying uh, when we're faced with choices or situations, what's the right thing to do for me, um, say, what is the right thing to do here? What is the fair and just Thing to do in this situation um, by doing that you are disconnecting yourself from the cold-blooded me 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 um, um, level of, of, of the reptilian brains awareness you are you are logging off that particular program um, uh, the reptilian brain uh, perceives um, reality through might is right through acquisition through more and more we can reverse that um, uh, level of um, reaction response and di uh, uh, log off from the um, influence of the reptilian brain on our behavior and crucially uh, in all this we can stop uh, reacting emotionally through quote as um, scientists say about the reptilian brain and what we get from it we can stop reacting from primitive emotional responses once we do that instead of reacting out of fear, reacting out of fight or flight to situations that we face, be it a, a pandemic, a situation in our lives, uh, uh, terrorism, whatever, we uh, calmly take a deep breath, take a step back and look at it um, calmly and sensibly before we make a decision on how we're perceiving this situation. 
by doing that, we are disconnecting ourselves from one, if not the major mechanism of human control, which is to trigger these primitive emotional responses, all of them based on fear and the survival mechanism. Going on from that, consciousness is all, um, um, or always has been and always will be. Com consciousness doesn't die. Just as the, the we don't die, we withdraw from the body computer. That's what we ludicrously call death. Um, it's like if I'm sitting here when I finish this interview, I'll shut the computer down and I'll go off in the front room. Um, symbolically, um, I've died because my computer has uh, its life force has been switched off and me consciousness has left the room has left the reality um, so consciousness doesn't die consciousness is eternal consciousness is um, um, all possibility all-knowing so um, from that point of view what do we have to uh, get caught um, in these survival responses for we have nothing to survive because there is no death and the fear of death um, and the survival mechanisms manifest in so many ways and trigger control through the reptilian brain. Fear of death is the classic. Oh, doctor, save me. That's why we give power to doctors and the medical profession and the transnational drug cartel is because we, we, we have uh, this fear of death. A fear of financial problems, fear of losing your job, fear of losing your partner, fear of what people think of you. All these are expressions of the survival mechanism which allows access to our reality and behavior responses through the reptilian brain. So, again, deep breath. There's nothing to survive. And consciousness, if we access it and flow with it, will all, and I know this from my own personal experience, will always provide what we need. No need to worry about it, no need to panic, no need to, oh my goodness me, what's going to happen? Flow with it and know that what you need will come when you need it. it took me a long time to relax into this, but after a, a, a while of going to the brink in my life on so many things, when it was almost about to collapse, and right at the moment it was about to collapse, um, the cavalry arrived in some form, and eventually I took the hint and I thought, this is telling me something. And what is it telling me? no need to worry about anything and I stop worrying and my goodness me how that disconnects you from these primitive emotional responses which control us yeah. you become laid back and, 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 and at peace with self and at peace with the world so I'm dealing now with all this real challenging information on one level and, and all these uh, things that are going on but I am as calm as you could imagine um, I, I have no fear of it I have no panic of it or anything because I've gone into this space of everything will come to me as I need it and I'm not going to worry about the future I'm just going to live in the now and that's another key thing the understanding that there is no time um, everything happens in the now and people say but there's a past okay um what happened where are you when you think of the past oh well I'm in the now yeah where are you when you think of the future well I'm in the now yes the past and the future are um, uh, mental constructs which we experience in the now and if we get pulled into the past of guilt and what if and we get pulled into the future oh my god what's gonna happen I gotta 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 and we're not living in the now and we therefore we're not living in our power and I could go on and on So when things are happening in our lives we don't like and we're drawing people into our lives we don't like and we're drawing experiences we don't like, instead of saying, why am I drawing these in? What is it about me that's creating this? What is it I'm putting out that's drawing this reflection in that I don't like, this pain in the ass is giving me a hard time? Instead of taking that power back and responsibility for what we create in our lives, we look out there for it. Boom, boom, boom. And we're encouraged to. And so we're in a situation where we're looking at the reflection, trying to change what's going on. When we need to change what is being reflected. You know, if you're standing next to a river and you see a reflection of yourself and you don't like it very much, you can throw stones at it, you can cuss it, you can kick it, you can jump in and thrash around. 
all that external thing which we do in our lives all the time you're responsible it's your fault I'm in this position out there out there out there externalizing responsibility but once all that thrashing is around is finished in the river and once you've um, thrown all those stones in everything settles down again and exactly the same reflection is being reflected as was before because the reflection is merely literally a mirror of what is being reflected we change inside we change out here this is the the thing that we've been pressured encouraged not to understand evolution is very very simple very simple goes in this sequence experience learn from the experience evolve as a result of the experience if at stage one we're putting out energy reflecting our state of being and we draw in a certain experience as a result person place whatever if at the point where we don't like the experience we are blaming everyone else out here it's your fault it was Ethel in 1963 it was me mother it's me color it's me sexuality what is pulling that experience in is not changing because we're blaming everyone else for it so what happens is because what's going out hasn't changed what comes back doesn't change and we hit these cycles in our lives and we've all had them and all still have them where the same things keep getting repeated we pull in the same type of person we have a relationship with we pull in the same uh, situation in, in work we nothing ever works in our lives and yet when you look at that what that is is evolutionary just running on the spot we're not moving because we're not changing what's creating what we don't like so it goes on and on and on once we take responsibility back and stop looking out here to change what's going on and look at what's reflected out there then in the same situation we say hold on a minute why have I pulled this experience in what is there to learn what is it about me that's done this okay got it at that point your attitude your imagination of yourself changes when that changes what you resonate out changes so you start pulling in different experiences that reflect the new vibration you're putting out and not the old one and when you kind of get into this mode of taking responsibility back suddenly things dramatically change and you can evolve ever so quickly you pull in an experience oh right what is there to learn from this okay got it change vibration evolve pull in a different experience what is there to learn from it got it change vibration evolve and you can move along so quickly in evolutionary terms once you start to open up to that as more and more people on this planet are as this cycle of change unfolds or you can stand here forevermore blaming every bugger else for things that you're creating and we're all creating and that's an option too but not a very good one so what we put out is what we get back we are in control of our lives no one else we just kidded that we're not for instance I, 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 I hear people you must have heard this where people go um, nothing ever happens in my life as if it's a boring it's a boring in my life Nothing ever happens. Anything I try, nothing kind of works, you know. And then you say to them, well, what do you want to do with your life? And they go, I don't know, really. Don't know, never thought about it. Now, I don't know, really, is actually a state of mind. Therefore, it is a vibrational frequency, and I don't know, really, goes out, and I don't know, really, comes in. Nothing ever works, because I don't know, really. If we can just focus on what we want to achieve and go with the intent, the most powerful thing we can do, what's our intent, what's our focus? This is what I want to do with my life. That intent goes out as a vibrational frequency and it will always bring towards us experiences and challenges that lead us to achieve what we want to achieve. That's where most people give up. They say, oh yeah, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do the other. That's my intent. And the intent then draws towards us what we need to do to achieve that intent. And when it gets a bit challenging, we go, oh, God. well, I'd like to do it, mate, but not that badly. Thank you very much. And we're out of the game. So if we want to be free and we want the world to be free, that's what our intent needs to be. And then the challenges and, the, and what we need to achieve that intent will come towards us. And then we can meet them and all this is over it's all an illusion and it's an illusion that we can enjoy or it's an illusion that can control us but what has happened 
is that we have forgotten that we are the dream and the dreamer and the dream has taken over and the dream has led us to believe that we are a part we think in terms of parts not whole we think in terms of David Icke not infinite consciousness and therefore we've got caught in an illusory trap of division and symbolized by this um, picture um, it talked about um, think of an eddy or whirlpool in a river it's part of the river but it's in a different state of reality it's not flowing with the river it's in its own little world and as it said as long as the circumstances remain the same that eddy will just keep going round and round and round and round only when the circumstances change the flow changes will it become flowing back into the river again and become the oneness and when it started this voice started talking to me it opened up by saying there's only one thing you really need to know infinite love is the only truth everything else is illusion and I, in my mind I went to say everything and I got halfway through it, it said everything else is illusion because what it was saying was the only truth is the existence of this infinite one consciousness which is all loving all knowing all wise the harmonious amalgamation of all everything else is the imagination of that consciousness made manifest illusion we have a dream and we wake up and we said oh I had this amazing dream well the only difference between that and this is we believe this dream is real and of course in the dreams when we fall off the edge of cliffs we just wake up we're all right we don't get splattered on the rocks because it's just a dream but we do here because we believe in the limitations of this dream and therefore we experience the limitations of this dream